Now we've looked at resistance, let's look at current potential difference graphs or IV graphs. The first one to start with is one of a resistor. And what you can see is it's a straight line through the origin. You should also notice that there's something top right on the graph and also bottom left. That's because the resistor can be placed any way around the circuit. So if we've got a positive value of potential difference, a positive value of current, we get this part of the graph. And if it's a negative current with a negative potential difference, we get the negative quadrant of the graph. But what does that really mean? Well, to get this bit of the graph, we have the battery this way around, so everything is positive. And then what we can do is we can swap the battery round. So this time, the current will flow this way through the resistor in the opposite direction, and we just show that by putting it as negative values. So some words to go with this then would be the current through an ohmic conductor, and that's one at a constant temperature, the same temperature, is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistor. So an ohmic conductor obeys Ohm's law. The word directly proportional refers to the straight line through the origin. If it's just proportional, it will be a straight line, but if it's directly proportional, it means it goes through naught naught, the origin. Because the gradient doesn't change, that means the resistance remains constant. Let's move on to what a lamp would look like. And as you can see, it's not a straight line through the origin, so therefore it does not obey Ohm's law. In order to get the shape graph like this, you would have a battery connected to a light bulb, but you would change the potential difference of the battery or the power source. And as you change the battery, you'd measure the current using an ammeter and a voltmeter that would go across in parallel to the light bulb. And then subsequently, you'd get a line graph that looks like this. Just like on the previous example, it doesn't matter which way around the current flows through the light bulb. When it goes through the positive way, it does this, so that'll be this way around clockwise and if you swap to the direction of the battery the current would change direction and that's when you would get this part of the graph in the negative quadrant of the axes. So given it's a curve we can see the resistance does change when the current changes when it goes through the component. The resistance of the filament lamp increases as the temperature of the filament lamp increases. So up here the current no longer increases by as much, the gradient levels off, even though we're increasing the push of the current through the lamp, the resistance gets a lot higher because the bulb gets hotter. And as you know, if you touch the bulb, it's going to hurt. When it's cooler, it is nearly a straight line, but as the current increases, resistance increases, and the reason is it gets hotter, and therefore it does not obey Ohm's law. The next one to look at is a diode, and that's different to the other two because it does matter which direction you put it into the circuit. The current will only flow through one direction of the diode. So what you need to be careful of is to look at the direction of the arrow. So the current will flow, in this case, from left to right. It follows the arrow head. If a current is flowing towards the arrow head this way, it's like a brick wall just here, no current can flow. And what we say is, is when the diode is in its reverse direction, it's got a very high resistance. And as you know, if it's got a high resistance, that means the current is very low. So let's look back at the graph. When it's in the wrong direction, it's got a really high resistance, so the current is zero. When it's in the correct direction, there is a little bit of resistance to start with, but then above a number, about 0.6 or 0.7 volts, the line goes steeply up, and it's got a virtually zero resistance in that direction. So this part of the circuit is when the diode goes the correct way, the current goes from the positive part of the battery through the diode and back round. If we swap the direction of the diode, the current still comes out of the battery the same end, but it hits that brick wall, and that's when you get an infinitely high resistance and no current can flow. Just to make you aware, there is a required practical, number four, so check another video where you can, it will go through it in more detail.